For once, the Suns did something they usually let other teams do to them. I just want to celebrate another game they're winning. I just want to celebrate Suns win 4-2 over the New Jersey Devils. How are the young guys now? I finally did it. I scored again. Quit taking penalties. The Sens are gonna blow this game. Way to tie up the stick in front. Not. Well done. Just well done. You better believe we're gonna be having a penalty chat at the end of this one. What a time to be alive. <laughs> what a long and brutal season that was. This team man. Now, full disclosure, before we get into last night's game at all, I have to admit, I never saw a second of the game last night. And for that, you can thank Sportsnet. They have six channels. Sportsnet Ontario, Sportsnet East, Sportsnet West, Sportsnet Pacific, Sportsnet One, and Sportsnet 360. Five of those channels are basic channels you get all the time. The sixth one, Sportsnet 360, you have to pay extra for. Well, guess what? Wednesday Night Hockey, National Broadcast, and the Sens get put on Sportsnet 360. Oh, but Chris, if they put them on 360, they'll get extra subscriptions. No, they won't. I just won't watch. I tried to watch a game, but it just wasn't working out. So finally, I just gave up. Besides, clearly Sportsnet didn't want anyone to watch a game last night because they buried it on some channel nobody has. Just ridiculous. Six channels to watch a game, and they get buried on the channel nobody has. Like, forget it. Not watching the game. I'd love to, but I'm not watching the game. And I'm not paying for the extra channel. As for the game itself, oh boy, I got lots of singing to do. As always though, let's kick things off with lineup changes. The Sens made just one change to their starting lineup for Monday, and none from their finishing lineup from Monday, as Craig Anderson got the start while Anders Nilsson served as the backup. Aside from that, the Sens kept the lineup the same. Despite Jonathan Davidson being ready to return, DJ Smith felt Bobby Ryan deserved to stay in the lineup, so he stayed in, and the same 18 skaters played once again. Unfortunately for the Sens, Early in the first period, it looks like the Sens haven't gotten the stinker out of their system for Monday, and they fall behind 1-0, barely four minutes in. Thomas Shabbat's point shot is blocked by Nico Heischer, Miles Wood picks it up, he feeds Wade and Simmons who races in on a breakaway, Simmons deeks out Andy, tucks it in the net, and it's 1-0 Devils. So 4-19 into the first period, the Sens have already been shorthanded once, and they're now down 1-0. Gusev then hits the post like 30 seconds later, and man are the Sens off to a great start. Thankfully, the Sens finally settle in after that, and the greatest goal scorer in Ottawa Senators history ties the game at 1. Connor Brown fires the puck on goal, Mackenzie Blackwood makes the save, Jean-Gabriel Pajot's on the doorstep, he jams away at it, it gets by Blackwood, and it's 1-1. Are ya ready, kids? Pajot, 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 Pajot. But not even three minutes later, Nikita Gusev's shot gets stopped by Anderson. The puck bounces out to basically the blue line to Will Butcher. He skates into the puck, fires a wrister by Anderson, and it's 2-1 Devils. I'm not exactly sure what happened here, but to me, it looks like the Sens overload was way too poorly executed, as they had four guys on the wrong side of the ice. That gave Butcher all the time and space he wanted to step in and rip a wrister by Andy. I mean, look at this screenshot for a minute. The second Butcher picks up the puck, there are four Sens players on one side of the ice. How are you ever going to play defense like that? And to make matters even worse, three of them were within stick length of each other. Ottawa's defensive play has been better-ish of late, but that was just awful. Thankfully, it doesn't get any worse, and we head to the first intermission with the Devils in front 2-1. Both teams have some chances in the second period, neither can find the back of the net, and we head to the third with the Devils still in front 2-1. Anderson then turns aside Taylor Hall on a partial breakaway, and that's a huge save as it allows the Sens to get back in the game. With six and a half minutes left, Burrow throws a shot on goal with a screen in front, it beats Blackwood, and we're tied at two. Really great to see the Sens resident copper get on the board with the second of the season, but this goal was all about Nemesnikov in front. If he doesn't set that screen, Blackwood sees the shot, and he more likely than not stops it. Fortunately for the Sens, Nemesnikov was there, and Blackwood wasn't. 
That goal gives the Sens momentum, and four and a half minutes later, they take their first and only lead of the game. Mackenzie Blackwood stones Nick Paul twice on excellent chances, but finally, that line comes through. Paul gets an excellent chance in front, his shot hits the post, Pajot picks up the rebound, tucks it in the empty net, and it's 3-2 Ottawa. And time for Skip Bayless's favorite, number two. Pajot! 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 With under a minute left, the Devils pull their goalie, Pajot blocks a Taylor Hall pass, fires it down the ice, hits the empty net, and it's 4-2 Ottawa. And for the third time in his NHL career, and the first time during the regular season, Jean-Gabriel Pajot has a hat-trick, and for the third time tonight, Pajot! 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 Would somebody shut up that stupid music? Not today! Let me give you the full song! Pajot! 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 For those of you who don't know me, I'm a huge Glorious Sons fan, but that Pajot song is quickly becoming my all-time favorite. I love that song, and I could sing it every day if I had to. It would make me as happy as a pig in his element if I did. And that's the final goal of the night, as the Sens pick up a 4-2 win. So real quickly, let's recap. Usually, the Sens take a lead in the third period, give up like 8 million goals, and get absolutely slaughtered. Last night, they go into the third period down, score three times in the period, and run away with the win. It's about time. Oh, and the Gatineau Goat had a hattie, so it was just perfect. As always, let's get in to good news, bad news. I mean, there's really only one place I could go with this, right? Jean-Gabriel Pajot was excellent last night, and that is the good news. But if I limit this to just last night, I'd be doing Pajot a great disservice. Yes, he scored a hat-trick last night, and yes, he almost single-handedly won the Sens a game, but he's been unbelievable all season long. Pajot has 11 goals this season. The next closest sends are Brady Kachuk and Vladislav Nemesnikov at 6. Pajot leads the team with 15 points in 18 games. And although I hate plus minus, Pajot is a plus 19, leading the league by 4 over John Carlson. To be a plus 19 on a team that struggled mightily this season, that's really impressive. And even more impressive when you consider the next closest send in plus minus is Boro at a plus 8. That makes Pajot plus 4 better than any other player in the NHL and plus 11 better than any other send. Oh, and he has 8 goals in his last 6 games, so the guy's red hot. I predicted Pajot would have a career year, and he's well on his way so far, thanks to a three-goal performance last night, and that is the good news. The Sens didn't start nearly well enough last night, and that is the bad news. While Ottawa starts haven't been awful this year, they have given up the first goal more often than not, including three of the last four games. Sure, the Sens have come back and won two of those three times they gave up the first goal, but if you continue to dig a hole early, you're not going to have a lot of success. Sure, it's encouraging that they're able to stick with it and come back in games, but they've given up the first goal in three of the last four games, and that is the bad news. Next up, the Sens return to action on Friday evening, when they welcome the Philadelphia Flyers to the Canadian Tire Centre. That contest will be the first of three meetings on the season between the two teams, with the schedule makers really packing those games together, as it's the first of three games in a little over a month between the two teams. The Flyers should come into that contest with a little more of the momentum than the Sens, as the Flyers did pick up two of three wins against Ottawa last season, including a 7-4 win in Ottawa early last season. And that holds especially true if you look at how the two teams have done so far this season, as the Flyers have a 10, 5, and 3 record, good enough for 23 points, and third place in the Metropolitan Division. And the Sens, meanwhile, have a 7, 10, and 1 record so far this season, good enough for a tie for fourth last in the NHL. Oh, and former 67 Travis Konechny rolls into town red hot so far this season, so that's going to be fun. That does it for this video. Hit like if you liked it, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, share it with your friends, and today's question of the day is, what would you do to fix Ottawa's slow starts of late? Let me know what you do down below, and we'll see you Friday night when the Sens welcome the Philadelphia Flyers.